Hey, what's up, Covalence friends? Welcome back to part two of our series on creating a signable input using Canvas. Now, I apologize in advance for the new look, the glasses and everything, but I have been severely under the weather basically since we released part one. Terrible cough. I haven't been able to get out of bed, but I wanted to get this out for you guys. I wanted to make sure that we kept the series rolling, and today we're going to be just doing something quick, which is going to be handling um, event initiation and signing up for things like mouse down, mouse move, mouse up, as well as touch start, touch move, touch end, and touch cancel. So we want to handle both mouse and touch events, and we're going to make this signable input as good as we can. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our app.ts, and we're going to comment out all of this house code. So let's just call it house code. We'll leave that in there in case anybody wants to play with it. But we're going to start actually defining a few other things. So let's say interface, and we'll say I mapped events. And we're going to have a start, a move, and an end. And so we can define our mapped events as I mapped events equals start move and all right and so for our start events we're gonna have mouse down and touch start for our move events we're gonna have mouse move and touch move and for our end events we're going to have uh, mouse up touch end and we're also going to put touch cancel in there as well. So if something happens where, you know, the touch process is canceled, we also want to end it the exact same way as if you lifted your finger off of uh, the screen, right? All right, so we have mapped events now. We have it defined as this mapped events, I mapped events interface, and we have our start, move, and end events. And what we're going to do is we're now going to create a function. So we can call it function add event listeners. And this is going to take in an event, which is a string, is going to take in, well, I guess let's first take in the element. So element, which is an HTML element, an event, which is a string. And actually what we could do is we could just, for now we could define this as being a string of start, move, or end, because that's all we really want to be able to take in. And finally, we'll take in our function, which or I guess let's just call it fn. And this is going to be um, basically it's just any kind of function. We'll say it's just, you know, for now, we'll say that it's a function that doesn't take in any arguments. Um, or I guess we could say that it takes in uh, an event argument, which would just be an event. All right. So and it returns void, right? All right. So now we have function out of listeners. And all we're going to do is we are going to basically look at our array. So we'll say const evt array equals mapped events event. If not evt array console.log um, you know, technically you should never do this. This is what TypeScript is for, since we're defining the input as only start, move, or end. But we'll just say no events found. And we'll return. But now we know that these EVT arrays have to exist. So what we'll do is we'll say uh, const len equals EVT array dot length for let i equals zero, i is less than length, plus plus i. We are going to do canvas dot add event listener. And we're going to say that it's going to be evt array i. Uh, and the listener is going to be fn. And options, we'll just say false for now. So generally, this would be capture, or it could be an object. Um, but for right now, we will just add the event listener. 
we'll go through each event and then we will therefore add all the event listeners that we have mapped from the mapped events are right here. So again, we pass in start. It's going to handle mouse down and touch start because we want to handle both mouse events, mouse events and touch events. Uh, for move, again, the same ordeal. And then for end, it's the exact same thing, but we're actually handling touch end and touch cancel because there are situations where the touch events they, it's not technically you're not ending the touch, but it cancels the touch. And I think a couple scenarios like this are if something like scrolling occurs or there's something happening you know, within the browser that just causes the touch to cancel, it'll actually fire this event instead of touch end. So we want to make sure that we handle both of these events for this end event for ours because we don't want to keep writing if touch cancel is fired and um, you know, we keep moving around the page, right? All right, so, oops. That would be a big issue. All right. So we have i equals zero, i is less than len, plus plus i, and we add the event listener. All right. So that's adding the event listeners. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and create our function on touch start. And we can put our EV in here, which will be the event. So we're going to have on touch start, we're going to have on touch move. And finally, on touch end. Um, and actually, since we don't know if it's going to be touch or not, let's just say on sig start, on sig move, on sig end. And for now, we'll say console.log signature starting. We'll say signature moving. And we'll say signature ending. And then what we can also do is we can console.log ev.type. And that should actually tell us which event that it's going to be uh, listening to. So let's go ahead and now call these. So we're going to say add event listeners. We're going to say canvas. Oh, that is another thing I messed up. This should really be element. We want to make it generic. And therefore, now we're actually using everything. So we have our event here, and we have our function being passed in there. So we're going to pass in canvas. Technically, in this example, we could have just eliminated this, and you know, but we want to make it generic because we want to, you know, we want to promote reusability here. And therefore, our canvas we're going to pass in. We're also going to pass in start, and we're going to pass in on sig start. Um, let's see types of oh so again this we actually have to well let's just say that we're gonna force this to be the case so we're forcing this it didn't like the fact that this was optional and this was non optional so we know that we're gonna get this passed in we're never gonna be calling on sig start on sig move and on sig end without actually passing an event so we can make this non optional and then we can make the function that we're passing in also non optional and then our TypeScript will be uniform. Um, but again, we're going to basically do this for start, move and end. And we'll have on sig move and on sig end. All right, so we've added all of our event listeners now. Let's go ahead and we're going to open this up and we're gonna say npm run dev. All right, we're going to open up a browser and we're going to go ahead and open up localhost and we're going to pop open our dev tools real quick. So let's for right now, let's get rid of that and we'll open up our console here. And let's see if I can zoom this in a little bit. There we go. All right. So again, you can actually see that just by moving over this thing, we're getting mouse move and signature moving, right? So Let's go ahead and we're going to clear this. So by default, as we get over this, we're actually always getting mouse move here. So what you could do is you can actually wait until um, we get a touch start to add the events, which would be an optimization. But for now, we're not going to really worry about that. We're going to use just Boolean values to return from the um, from the mouse move function. But we're always tracking mouse move here, right? Now if I click down you can see that we now have mouse down. So signature starting, mouse down, 
and when I unclick, I get signature ending mouse up. And then as I'm moving, we always get the mouse move. Now, if we go over and this guy here, right, we actually can see that if we remove this, we're not actually getting this mouse move anymore because the Chrome emulator um, actually pretends like it's touch events. So if I go touch start, it says signature starting, touch start. As I'm moving, we get touch move. And then when I release, we get touch end here, right? So it's gonna be hard to actually simulate the touch cancel. So we're just gonna believe that that works. But as you can see, we get touch start, all right? Oh, doesn't like it when you right click. But again, it actually saw a mouse up. But again, let's make sure that we get touch start, touch move, touch end, right? And everything seems to be looking good right here. All right, so I think I managed to somehow get through that whole thing without coughing or anything like that. So again, thank you for bearing with me. Apologies for my voice, a little bit of raspiness there, and apologies for the glasses and you know the overall disposition of myself. But I'm hoping that by next video, this will all be figured out. It'll all be resolved. I'll be feeling like a million bucks again. But I appreciate you guys staying with me. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please drop them in the comments. And I will look forward to releasing a fully healthy part three of this video. So again, see you soon and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Later.